Today's reading is from John, chapter 1, the opening verses of John's Gospel, the great poetry and imagery of God's, of John's view of what God did in the coming of Jesus Christ. So from chapter 1, before the world was created, the Word already existed. He was with God, and he was the same as God. From the very beginning, the Word was with God. Through him, God made all things. Not one thing in all creation was made without him. The Word was the source of life. And this life brought light to mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. God sent his messenger, a man named John, who came to tell people about the light, so that all should hear the message and believe. He himself was not the light. He came to tell about the light. This was the real light, the light that comes into the world and shines on all mankind. The Word was in the world. And though God made the world through him, yet the world did not recognise him. He came to his own country, but his own people did not receive him. Some, however, did receive him and believed in him. So he gave them the right to become God's children. They did not become God's children by natural means, that is, by being born as the children of a human father. God himself was their father. The Word became a human being, and full of grace and truth lived among us. We saw his glory, and the glory which he received as the Father's only Son. John spoke about him. He cried out, This is the one I was talking about when I said, He comes after me, but he is greater than I am, because he existed before I was born. Out of the fullness of his grace, he has blessed us all, giving us one blessing after another. God gave the law through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only Son who is the same as God and is at the Father's side, he has made him known. So that was verses um, 1 to 18, classic sort of beginning of many Christmas Day services. What John is saying here might sound convoluted and it might sound difficult, but actually if you take it slowly, exactly as we've just done there, he's really making things obvious. He's spelling out the fact that God came into the world in the person of Jesus. So that little baby that we celebrate in nativity scenes was God in human form. And that fact alone is all you need to know <laughs> at this stage of the game. Because that's the seismic, amazing event. Up to that point, God had spoken to people, prophets and leaders and elders and all sorts of people had experienced God in their lives. And sometimes in the Old Testament, God's intervention with people was big and showy, you know, pillars of fire and burning bushes and, and floods and all sorts of things. But here, God comes into the realm of normal human experience. Our God contracted to a span, incomprehensibly made man, as the hymn says. It is such a a transformative event. It is as big, in fact it's bigger, than the first creation. Whether that's the first spark of the Big Bang in our universe, or the first spark of the Big Bang in the multiverse, and it's, there's an infinite number going on, who knows and who can possibly know? Um, but the point is, the spark of creative life that started all things was one thing to create physical matter and the universe and the galaxy and everything else that we see around us and the tiny atoms and subparticles that make us up. 
that's all stuff and it's all fueled by the creative force and love of God. Cells divide, etc. Plants grow through that creative spirit. But when God became human in the person of Jesus, he really became one among us and showed us what God was like. We had before that other people's experiences of the effects of God rather than a relationship with God. And that's what makes this such a seismic change. Because at this point, we have a relationship with God rather than an experience of God. In the person of Jesus, we saw in a way that makes sense to us because he was a human being like we are. And the way he acted as a human being is, a, is something we can relate to. And what we saw when God became human in the person of Jesus was a life that was lived on the wing, deep and busy with the world getting involved with all its muckiness, with all its grubbiness, with all its incompleteness, with all its unfinishedness, with those that society shunned, with those that society despised, with those who set themselves up full of pride and prejudice, and talking to them about the unity of all people, that God's creation is universally creative and beautiful. Uh, for example, you don't find particularly beautiful flowers in one country and horrible dead ones in another. Creation is everywhere and God's unifying creativity is there with all people everywhere. Every single person is formed from the dust of the stars through God's creative love. And as such, there is an inherent unity. We are all one. And that's what the life of Jesus showed, that everybody mattered. Nobody was to be despised. That times when people set themselves up as big and impressive and important people was actually just their reward. Uh, if that's what you want out of life, that's what you can get. But to be truly alive and truly alive is to interact with people. It is to share what you have with others and recognise in the giving that one is also receiving. It's not a thing to earn things for ourselves, but it is the true nature of relationship. And life is about relationships. And everything that's valuable is about the interactions you have with other people and ultimately, of course, with God. So John makes this oh so clear that this initial creative spark is exactly what is born in the person of Jesus and it is here it is among us it is real you can see it you can touch it you can laugh with it you can dance with it you can drink with it you can be involved with it you can see it and the, all the rest of the gospel stories simply tell us what happens when God became a human person and lived among other human beings and what their reactions were. Sometimes their reactions were utterly and totally transformed, blown away by an encounter they realised and accepted was God in human form. And other times it was complete indifference. And other times it was active hatred. As is always the way. Um, if people do anything that is good, there will always be people standing on the sidelines saying, mm, what do they want to do that for? Um, or why bother with them? Uh, and all of these reactions are based, of course, on regarding ourselves as somehow the superior ultimate answer to everything. That we, in our little cell of awareness, are the only real thing that matters. Now, this is completely and utterly understandable, because physically that's exactly what we are. And nobody else in the world knows the aches and pains we have or the anxieties or the fears that we have. We are our own little island. And so it is inevitable that we think of ourselves as the only real thing we can rely on, the only reality we know. And of course, in a real physical way, we see the world through our eyes. 
and that's uh, something born not only of the, um, the 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 actual physics of our eyes, but also the um, conditioning, the tradition, the lenses, the, the the sort of assumptions that we all have as we look at the world. Each one of us has our own unique view of that thing, but it is just ours. It's entirely our view. It's not a it's not a foundational um, view that's true for anybody else. And the mistake we can all make is that is to think that well, what we see is of course the ultimate truth. Um, and what we believe is the ultimate truth, and how we live is the best way to live, etc., etc. So Jesus comes to show that basically people really matter, that everybody matters, and that nobody should get puffed up with pride or self-importance or the pursuit of all sorts of other bizarre things that the world holds up as important, because ultimately we're meant to be social people. We live in community not only with God through this new relationship when the word became flesh, but with one another, because everybody matters and everyone is important. This is such a unifying view and such a wonderful vision for humanity. It's in sort of ecclesiastical language what we tie up by saying the kingdom of heaven on earth. Um, a group of people, not a place, a group of people, a mindset, who have love at the core of their being. Not because they're wonderful, lovely people, necessarily, though they may be, um, but because they are fueled by the love that God has put into their hearts. They know beyond all doubt that the God of love is with them and for them forever. And so it is very easy, it is intuitive, it is natural to want to look at other people through those eyes of acceptance and love and wishing for them the very best. It's what Jesus said in the Great Commandment, uh, taken from words from the Old Testament. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul and your strength, and love your neighbour as yourself. Put God at the centre, get rid of your arrogance, your pride, your self-satisfaction, your pursuit of um, whatever else you're pursuing, and put God at the centre and love others totally and utterly. And that really is the recipe for all of these things. And this wonderful opening chapter makes that just so obvious. It puts Jesus firmly in the place of um, God in human form. And it makes it very obvious what John's gospel is all about. And John, often referred to as a more spiritual gospel, is actually really easy and obvious. He even says at the end of the book in chapter 20 verses 30 these things have been written in order that you may believe that jesus is the messiah the son of god and that through your faith in him you may have life and that's what it's all about